In part three of rebuilding your forks on your Buell 1125 CR and R models, I show you how to disassemble, change the seals, and reassemble your forks. To get started, you'll want to find a method to help stabilize the fork while you're working on it. What I did is I went to my local hardware store and picked up some threaded rod, cut it down to a foot, foot and a half, like such, and got a 3 8 hose to cover the rod and then just stick it in the lower fork leg to help stabilize it. With the covering on it, it won't risk damaging the lower fork threads. But to devise a method to help stabilize your fork, you grab a 32mm impact socket and an impact gun, that way you can undo the top clamp. Once that top clamp is removed, you will need a special tool like such, this one being by Traxion. I picked this one up for roughly 20 bucks off eBay. Now there are other methods to remove it, but this is the best way to do it. Other videos on YouTube show you how to use an angle channel. That can easily slip off and you end up scoring and ruining the inter internals of your fork. So this one, if you can't afford it for some reason, you can get a three inch donut gasket from an auto parts store, drill two holes in it, thread them, use some 5 16 bolts and you have the exact same tool. Now you can use two ratcheting straps to help compress the tool, but for sake of the video, I wanted to prove that you can in fact use your own body weight to compress the spring. Once the spring is compressed and your tool is locked into place, you can see here, you have access to the 17 and the 14 millimeter nuts that get the dampening rod out. The top nut is a 17 while the lower is a 14 millimeter. Once you break the nuts loose, you can easily remove the dampener assembly. Go ahead and set it to the side once removed. Once the dampener assembly is removed, all you have to do is remove your locking tool. Go ahead, set your tool to the side, and remove the inner sleeve of the fork. On the sleeve, there's a fixed nylon piece to the bottom and another rubber seal around it. That specific seal we will not be replacing. At this stage, you'll want to tip over the fork. That way you loosen up the spring and all the fluid will come out. Once the spring's removed, you can separate the two remaining halves. The lower leg portion that's still in my left hand, this piece we will not be disassembling any further. We will just clean it up. Where we will be focusing our work on is the outer sleeve as shown. At the very bottom, there's a dust seal, like such. Now what holds the seal in place is a snap ring. You'll need a small screwdriver and wiggle it around and you can easily pop out the snap ring. Once that snap ring's out, 
you can take that small screwdriver and work it around the outer fork, being careful not to scratch the fork tube. Once done, the fork seal will pop directly out. What you will need to remove next is the inner fork oil seal. This will take a little more effort, will be a lot easier with an actual seal puller tool, but I did not currently have one, so I just used a screwdriver. Either method works well, and once removed, there will be a small, thin metal washer that you'll need to remove afterwards. Go ahead and place it to the side. Now the hardest part of the disassembly is a copper bushing that's pressed into the inner workings of the fork. The most efficient way I've found to remove this bushing is to use a small rotary tool like a Dremel. If you do use a Dremel, just be careful not to scratch the inside. It doesn't take much to ruin the inner workings of the fork. Once you're able to cut a slit into the bushing, you can take a screwdriver or a seal puller and work it out. And just for reference from the Buell Parts catalog, here's the fork schematic for an 1125. Next, after everything is disassembled, you want to get some brake clean and some shop rags and clean everything thoroughly. Here are the seals and the bushings needed to rebuild the forks. Part numbers and descriptions are mentioned in part one of my video. To start out, you'll need to press in the new copper bushing. You can use a seal driver but the method I chose to use is a two inch modified piece of PVC. You just go ahead and work it around till it's pressed in there. It doesn't take a lot of force, but you do need to seat it properly. Next, you'll need to reuse the old thin metal washer. Place it in like such. Does not matter which way you put it in. Now what will matter is the next portion. The next piece to install is the fork oil seal. The pressure side will need to be facing downwards. That's where the springs are located. So when you drive it in, you should not be looking at the springs in the seal. Again, it would be easier to use a seal driver, but I did not currently have one. And again, I used a two inch piece of PVC to drive it in, slowly working it into place. After the fork oil seal is driven into place, you can apply the dust boot cover by hand. You do not need a seal driver for this portion. It will only go into place one way. Once it's put into place, go ahead and take that snap ring and feed it through. You can easily find the lip to place it into and it'll snap directly into place. Once you've got the snap ring into place, you'll want to take a small screwdriver and just run it along the ridge line, making sure it's seated properly. Once all the seals are driven into place, take a little bit of used oil and apply it around the fork oil seal you pressed into place. Much like you would when changing your oil on an oil filter, you do not want any leaks from a dry seal. Once you lubricated the seal, go ahead and take that outer fork portion 
and lower it over top of the lower leg. Double check to make sure there's no binding. Go ahead and drop your spring directly into place. Once your spring is fully seated, fill with the recommended oil of your choosing. There's many other videos on how to bleed the dampening system on a Showa style fork. I will not go into depth with those, just the basics. What I'm showing you here is wrapping a string around the dampening rod that's already mounted to the lower fork. This way, when you go ahead and apply the inner seal, you can lift the string up. That way the dampening rod is facing upwards and you can lock it into place easier. Somewhat difficult to explain, so hopefully the video can show what I'm talking about. Here you should see me lifting the spring up. You want to tie a knot on the other end and lower it to the other inner portion of the fork. Nylon side down, and then the original seal goes back into place. Here you can also see I have the tool already located in place. Now go ahead and start to apply force downward with your body weight while pulling on the string. Input the locking tool. After a few tries, you can get it into place. Once that's done, go ahead and snip the string, making sure there's no string falling down inside. You do not want to have any string remaining when you close up the forks. Once that is done, lower the dampening rod into place. Once screwed into place, you can take your 17 millimeter and your 14 millimeter wrenches and snug it down tightly. The 17 millimeter bolt's going to be on the top, while the 14 millimeter portion is on the bottom. Here you get a good angle of how the Traxion tool works. Once it's snugged down tightly, again, apply your body weight to knock the wrenches out of place. Once you're happy with how everything is seated properly, go ahead and remove your tool. Now you can go ahead and remove your tool for the final time. For the last step, you'll lift the outer portion of the fork up to the cap, spinning it into place. Be careful not to cross-thread it. Grab your impact gun with a 32mm impact socket and snug it down into place. Proper torque on the cap is 22 to 34 pounds of torque. And there you have it. You just completed the rebuild portion of the forks on your Buell 1125 CR and R models. The next and the final step in part four is to reassemble it onto the bike.